I had the sweetest mother-in-law that ever lived. I have never had any mother-in-law problems. The only time there ever was a misunderstanding, it was my fault. And I was young and inexperienced, and, well, maybe I just ought to tell you about it. I, I'm pretty well padded now, but when I married my husband, I weighed 106 pounds, and I was 5 feet 9. I looked like an ambulating telephone pole. <laughs> there were certainly no curves that attracted him. I had angles. I didn't have curves. <laughs> But he couldn't brag because he only weighed 125 and he was six foot two. So we were a couple of telephone poles. Well, life and age has taken care of adding the padding. And, of course, he has to try to work awful hard getting some of the padding off these days. But anyway, uh, we had to go and stay with my mother-in-law for six months while her husband was away. And Granny couldn't be left alone, the family felt like. And we could go, and we did. And she was so sweet. But one day I came down the hall and I always heard eavesdroppers never hear anything good of themselves. I wasn't really trying to eavesdrop. But my brother-in-law Reef was there and he and my mother-in-law was talking and I heard Reef say, I don't think she's going to make it through the winter. Have you noticed her hip bones? Every rib sticks out. <laughs> well, I was very sensitive on the point of my uh, size. <laughs> I was so tall and yet so skinny and so big boned until it made me look even worse. I mean, if I'd been smaller boned, I don't think it would have looked so bad. But I stopped to froze in my track and I heard my mother-in-law giggle and say, Well, we can just hope. I've done everything I can to try to get some meat on those bones. And she did. I mean, she was always trying to feed me. Well, I turned around and went back to my room and got my little handbag and walked over to my niece and spent the day with her. I wasn't even going to stay in the same house with these people talking about me like that. I couldn't help it because my hip bones stuck out and because they could see my ribs every time I moved. And I sat over there and felt so sorry for myself. And when my husband come in from work, I walked home with him. And uh, he said, you have a nice visit with Mac? I said, yeah, I spent the day with her. But I didn't tell anybody what it was. He, he knew there was something wrong. He tried to pick me, but I wouldn't communicate. That's another problem with lovelessness. We don't communicate when we've got that problem. And uh, this went on for six weeks. And I'd, go, I'd leave when he left. I refuse to stay in that house. Anybody making fun of me because I'm skinny and I can't help it. I've been skinny all my life. When I was just a kid, my dad would give me a dime every day. He said, now you spend a nickel on a Hershey bar and a nickel on an ice cream cone. They thought that would fatten me. Well, I'd go and buy me two big sour pickles, <laughs> which didn't help anything. Um, but I'd always been so skinny. And in fact, now if I even think about it, losing a little bit of weight. My husband has a fit. He said, I hugged a bag of bones too many years and I don't want to do any more hugging bags of bones. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, after six weeks, one morning, I opened my eyes and Granny's knocking on the door and Brother Freeman said, come in. And she comes to by the bed. Granny always wore an apron and tears was always so close by. And she starts crying. She said, now, Nona, honey, I know there's something wrong. And she said, I'm, I can do such dumb things and I have probably offended you. And she said, would you please just tell me what I've done wrong so I can make it right? I said, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> we can be so smart and so ugly. And uh, she just cried and cried. And my husband got up on his elbow and he said, Honey, if Granny's offended you, tell her about it. I said, Well, I just don't appreciate it, people making remarks about my hip bones and my ribs. I can't help it because I've never had any weight on me. I've always been skinny. And I can't help it. It's the way God made me, I guess. And so... Granny looked puzzled. She said, but honey, 
when did any when did I say anything about your hip bones and your ribs? I said, I heard you talking to Reef. I was coming down the hall. And Reef said, he, he started it. He said, I don't think she's going to make it through the winter. Look at those hip bones sticking out. And, and then talked about my ribs every time I'd move. And, and uh, she looked puzzled for a few minutes. She says, oh, honey, we wasn't talking about you. We was talking about old Blue, the cow. We didn't... <laughs> It's very easy to jump to conclusions. And lack of love will help you to do it. You can figure out two people standing together talking, yeah, they're talking about me. And you can make yourself so miserable. If you love your sister like you love yourself, she could not hurt your feelings. It's impossible.